What's going on, everybody? Tobin here with you. Thanks for checking us on out here. Much appreciated. Hey, coming up uh, later on this week, a new episode of the Porpoise Pod, a new Dolphins podcast with me and my guy Alejandro Solana. We are co-hosting that puppy together, uh, bringing that a couple times a week, three times a week during the season. So be on the lookout on Thursday, Friday for your final, uh, your preseason finale preview. Joint practice today. And the Eagles were in town to uh, to get some working with the Miami Dolphins. Oof. It's hot. Tua was saying this to talking to Jalen Hurts today. Jalen Hurts like Tua. It's hot. It is. It was, I mean, it's. I think I look like a like a cross between like a, a, an Oompa Loompa in the situation right now. Like that's how crispy it was out there. And speaking of crispy, Chef Throw RD was out there cooking a bird, dude. I mean, it was like a Thanksgiving out there. If it was like a patriot, uh, an even more patriotic Thanksgiving. And Tua Tungavailoa was carving up eagle for a big old family meal because that's what he was doing. He was cooking, dude. He was out there. And, I mean, immediately on the one-on-ones, him and Tyree Kill, they go deep. They send themselves a message. It's roasty toasty time. And the cheetah did what the cheetah does. Left poor Darius Slayton with with, with hobbled legs. He, he wanted to tap out, tap machine, as the great Habib Nurmagomedov would say. He didn't want any more. And, and, you know, it was funny because this went all viral, the clip that uh, Clay Farrar put up from Local 10. And, oh, did A.J. Brown from the Eagles get sassy? He was all mad on Twitter because he's like, no, you guys put up the ones where we were roasting their corners. Well, listen, I, you know, take that up with your media there in Philadelphia. A.J., I don't know what to tell you. Maybe you don't got the, uh, the poll there yet. Because uh, you're coming there from Tennessee, I don't know what the deal is, but you know, have them look a little bit more live on the cameras. Because look, we saw the end game of you, where, you know, running by Xavier Howard, bobbling a ball, juggling it, and then and hauling it in. Um, you know, I'm sorry, the whole art wasn't there for for everybody to see of what happened there against Xavier Howard. You know, maybe new mystery footage will uh, unveil itself, and uh, you know, we'll have some footage of you snatching ankles, much like the cheetah did. But he was out there like a like a like a big cat would be taking down his prey but it was great man Tua was picking them apart definitely that you could even go look at the re- look i'm not even being biased here go look at all these eagles reporters i was like reading a list of them on dolphins reddit it was like bloop, bloop. i was even hearing them you know i had a couple of them behind me boots on the ground today and they're like man dolphins are kind of kicking their ass you know is what it was today that's how that's how it was rolling man some beautiful throws from Tua. he was uh, him and tyreek hill Mwah. i mean it was those guys are on point. I don't know if you guys knew this, but people thought that Tyreek Hill gassing two up a little bit too much. I got to, to some argument this today on the uh, the radio show with some national talk Yahoo who's just like, oh, hey, Tyreek is saying things he doesn't even mean. It's like, is he or call me crazy? Does he actually believe the things that he says? Maybe a guy, this is just me, maybe a guy who has caught footballs for a living at, a, at an elite rate. Maybe he knows a good football player when he sees one. You know, it did. He did refer to two as ten Matt Moores, which sounds pretty awesome to me. Especially if we're talking the Matt Moore comes off the bench, not the one with a week full of practice. Tua had even a beauty too, man. He had this one to like Tyree Kill, <laughs> threading the needle. Like, and honestly, t- Tua could be a seamstress. You know, like he could be out there. <laughs> he could have had the little football, and he could he could sew up wedding dresses. That's how accurate he is. Threads that needle, dude. Right there. <laughs> One thing that was cool, my favorite play of the day, honestly, came from a man who has been like the most polarizing man in camp, Mike Gusecki. And the day started off for Mike Gusecki. It was like talking about the idea of, you know, he had these trade rumors. The Dolphins are exploring trade rumors. We know the quotes that happened after the uh, after the vaunted uh, last preseason game. Oh, I'm looting a new position, and people are worried about Mike Gusecki. Well... There were other reports came out from Palm Beach Post. They put cold water in it, say the Dolphins haven't explored talks with Mike Gusecki. Bull bleep. They're basically throwing on the rumors. And he had this play today. He had the catch of the day. It was like in stride, one-handed. Like, it was a beaut. Just one-handed grab, full wingspan, hauls it in. And it, it shows you why he is the special pass catcher that he is. Like, all this attention on everybody else. And certainly, then to, to be uh, improved, revamped receiver cores, um, 
he's still uh, he's still dangerous in that spot. Yeah, they're going to have him try and become a more well-rounded player. Nothing wrong with that. Trying to learn another skill set. Nothing wrong with that. But in that realm, he is still a mismatch. He is still dangerous, and he showed that today for sure. And he did that, by the way, showing some toughness because he got uh, he got uh, on one play, and he got banged up. And I don't know if he was cramping or he was something with his uh, – but he was, like, in a lot of pain. He was, like, wincing on over. Trainers come through. Never went to the locker room. Took himself a minute, gathered himself, and then went off into the uh, – Went off uh, later down the sidelines, and that was that. He was uh, he was ready to roll, and then made that incredible catch. Then thereafter, so that was beautiful. Big day, nice day from Gasecki, nice day from Cedric Wilson, big time day from Tua and Tyreek. They even got the, I mean, they got the crowd going early, dude. With that, with that one on one, here was Tua on that. Me and Tyreek were going back and forth about what route he wanted to run first. He told me any route. I said, "What route do you want to run?" He said, "Any route." So. Coach Bev jumped in and said, hey, I want to hear the crowd, you know, cheer. So I said, just run a go. So we ran a go route, and Tyree caught the ball. So that was cool. Now, on the defensive side, defense was on the far side of the field. Tough for everybody to see, but they weren't moving the ball too much over there uh, for Jalen Hurts. Of course, there's a lot of parallels. You got Slim Reaper, Jalen Hurts. I was into the Dolphins taking Slim Reaper. Um, you know, what a monster season he had his last year at Alabama. Of course, they ended up going with Jalen Waddle, who was out today for precautionary reasons. Uh, started warming up, and then all of a sudden took the pads off, and he was uh, sitting stuff out. They're being very cautious with him after doing him, let him do a little bit of work yesterday. Um, they're still slow rolling it as we got a lot of time still, a couple weeks before we get to the regular season. So they're being cautious with Waddle, baby, Waddle, baby, Waddle, baby, Waddle. But on the defensive side, my favorite thing with a joint practice. Had ourselves a little kerfuffle, a little kerfuffle that was going on. Like there was a moment where like everybody was kind of staring at each other. It was kind of like <laughs> stare downs, right? And then it was like the next play, once the action got going, boom, kerfuffle. All staring at each other. Looked like Jalen Phillips was uh, part of the reason. He was wearing the donning the orange jersey today, by the way, looking fantastic like he was back at the U, dude. He looked, uh, he looked real good wearing that orange number 15 after a big-time practice the day beforehand. And the Dolphins' second-year pass rusher, you know, is not admitting that he was at fault with this little dust-up. Yeah, we're just competing, man. It's, uh, it was hot out here. We're having a great time competing. Uh, you know, there's no animosity. That's just that competitive spirit, man. You got to butt heads sometimes. So, hey, it's just good on good. We're getting them better. They're getting us better. Jalen, was that, was that you on the flying or Ah, uh, no, nah, I couldn't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> you can call it a dust-up. You can call it a kerfuffle. You could call it a brouhaha. It wasn't. It's definitely not a melee. Let's not get crazy. But whatever you want to say it was, the Eagles got their ki- their ass kicked many a ways on the field. Um, and, that was, and that was a great thing to see. A, a fine day indeed. Anytime a Miami team can kick the crap out of Philly on any level, whether it be hoops, Hockey, fake football, whatever's, dude. I mean, like, whatever rattles these Santa snowball throwers, it, it, it brings a delight to me like none other. Because, like, for a city, like, thank you for Rocky and Bernard Hopkins, and really for nothing else. Philly cheese, I could take or leave. There are plenty of other sandwiches that are better. But anytime it gets them all all ruffled up, I'm all for it when it comes to to to, to harassing Philadelphia. I, I really, really, it, it brings me great joy. Um, Tua didn't speak today, as we uh, heard a little bit earlier, but had some had some insight, you know, uh, some beautiful thoughts from Tua Tungavaloa in regards to where things are with the team uh, in comparison to last year, and was asked like, just what is the difference from this year? And the year prior, and he says, I don't know, everything? I don't know, everything. Everything. Uh, Offense is different. The confidence that the guys have coming out to practice is different. The confidence that the guys have coming into the building is different. Uh, You know, the way we do things around the building is different. Just just everything. I I can't necessarily point point to one thing. Um, And I think that's what's going to help – make us a, a, a better team is, you know, us spending more time with each other, uh, not just in the building, but outside the building. 
and we'll see where where this thing goes for us. That's beautiful, dude. I mean, like that is that's goosies. I mean, what 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 other word can we describe it with? You know, we're all gonna be in this thing together to to get this thing on track. Everything's being done beautiful. You know, feels feels a little bit friendlier. You know, you don't have a a coach who's trying to sabotage me. Don't have a bearded backup quarterback boohooing and crying to his best friend Chan Gailey to sabotage me with the playbook. You know, it, it, it's almost like it's almost like if you set your quarterback up for success, good things can happen. Pretty crazy, pretty crazy, dude. And then he had this to say about why that confidence is is at an all time high for this club. And uh, here's a little bit more of your Dolphins QB. Yeah, I think for for the team, like it, it's the it's the guys that that are helping us get to where we want to go. And I would say it's our position coaches, it's uh, obviously our head coach, who is probably one of the most optimistic uh, people I've I've ever been around. And I, I would say just those guys and kind of the, the the leadership that Mike displays for for everyone to see. That I think that's what gives the entire the entirety of the team. Uh, confidence yeah that's yeah that's right that's right Mike Mike McDaniel one of the most optimistic people I've been around you know as opposed to a guy who was was looking for my replacement for every which way and is now gone Goosey's galore dude I I mean like what, what else can we say he's out here he's telling you you know the way the atmosphere is in the building the way they're going about their work the way Mike McDaniel uplifts everybody it smells like this is going to be a fantastic start, okay? You know, like, if, if, if two is out here cooking, you could just feel the recipe for Chef Throwardy is going in the right place. And fantastic day at practice this week. Great day on Tuesday. Great day, joint day, day one. We'll see what happens joint day, day two. But, you know, who knows? Will he get, uh, will he get a little run on in in Saturday? We'll see. We'll see. But either way, you have to be loving the way that QB is talking about what the atmosphere has been doing. And I'll tell you, like you had a lot of outside eyes looking at him today, which was interesting because, you know, we can all be very, very tunnel visioned in town, you know, especially with all these jackals out there trying to dump on the team. But you had a lot of Philadelphia media, very fickle media. You know, they'll like be like Ben Simmons. You're dead to me. That's this is the kind of people we're talking about observing. And they're just like, whoa. This dude was by far the better quarterback on the field. This guy was by far the better Bama quarterback. That was one thing as a Canes fan. I mean, it was a whew, lot of Alabama love, too. That was tough for me. That was tough for me. I didn't like that. I didn't like that. I don't like the fact that Alabama has the thing that the U had, not only as being an elite football program, but I don't like like the 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 the, the bond that all the Bama guys have. Like That's very old school canes like the canes were always the program that had that tight thing and you know noise me even jalen phillips today was like yeah, yeah, yeah. only uh, only cane out here Blech. i'm with him dude because yeah, you know sheldrick right one got cut and uh, bummer i didn't like that but other than that everything else was fantastic from that perspective so from uh, from every other perspective so the week rolls on new porpoise pod coming up later on this week hope you guys will subscribe do that today and so you'll get the episode as it arrives up uh, like a little present, right? Like a, like a little present to your phone or device. That would mean a lot to me. And uh, Tobin and Leroy podcast as well. If you guys could subscribe to that, if you haven't already, uh, the ticket Miami on YouTube, if you guys could check that out as well, it's appreciated everybody. You guys are the best and you know, I never know how to end these things. You're beautiful.